So, it is now October, which means two very important things. Thing number one, let's go spooky season, baby. And thing number two, let's go Mets, baby. Let's go freaking Mets. You see what the Mets are doing? My God. Oh, I wish this was still a baseball channel like I had it years ago. We could talk about the Mets. But no, we're going to talk about spooky season, which I... I also enjoy because I have a brand new movie review. I just watched a film, a film that actually came out months ago that I wanted to see because it was an unlimited release in theaters and I unfortunately did not get to see till today. I got to watch it and although it took a while to watch, I don't think enough people have been exposed to this movie that it's like inappropriate for me to do a late review. So of course I'm talking about Oddity, a movie that I've heard so much about all year. I've heard a lot of people call it arguably the scariest movie of the year. So that's why I posed the question in this video, is this the scariest movie of the year? No, it's not. I clickbaited all of you. Ha ha. I Put a question mark in the title, though, so technically I didn't. But it is a damn good horror movie. It's a really, really well-made, small, independent horror feature that I was extremely impressed with, and I want to talk about it a little bit here. And it's a movie that I also can recommend for Spooky Season. Is it really a Halloween movie? Is it really a uh, Halloween vibes movie? I don't know about that, but this is definitely a spooky, spooky movie for all of you in this Halloween time looking for something that's a little scary. So what is Oddity? Oddity is a story about this couple, this relationship, this wife and her husband who works at sort of a, a psych ward. And one night, this woman in this house alone is presented with a problem. This dude who's from the psych ward comes to her door and he tells her, hey, somebody walked into your house. They are in there, and they are trying to kill you. Unlock the door and let me in, and I will help you out. And of course, she's like, you're crazy. I don't know if I should let you in. And he goes, listen, I'm not crazy. There's somebody in there. And then the cameras cut to black. And when the cameras come back later in the movie, you find out that she, in fact, died. You don't know how she died, but you know that she died in that house. Now, now, about a year later, her sister comes to the same house, and she wants to investigate. Her sister is this blind weirdo who sort of has weird voodoo powers. She could see truth. She could see back to the realm of the dead, essentially. So she goes, and she wants to figure out what actually, what actually happened to her sister, and we have a movie, and a pretty fine, good movie about weird, creepy ghost shit. Now, granted, I heard a lot of people saying this movie is very akin to something like The Conjuring, that style of haunted house horror, and that is something I completely disagree with. This movie is truly an investigative sort of horror thriller. It's not a movie that focuses solely on trying to scare you with jump scares and weird ghost stuff. It's a movie that's trying to tell an emotional character drama, and it really speaks to that as you watch the whole thing, and you really get to the end of the film, which I won't spoil, but the ending of the film really set home what this movie was trying to do. It's not trying to be the scariest thing ever like my title sort of suggests and it's trying to tell a really good character drama here and I think it does a great job. When it comes to the actual scares though the movie does work on a lot of levels. The main reason is its production design. Most of this film takes place in this one house that's under renovation. This house is creepy. The production of the main rooms that we sit in are just kind of older and kind of archaic and one of the most important things about any horror movie especially ones that settle around uh the the vibes of supernatural stuff is the setting needs to work something that works about the conjuring is the house that they use in that film is horrifying even in the second movie you need to have a good production area to actually have a horror space and this movie's is really well done you also need good practical effects when the scares actually happen whether you're seeing ghosts whether you're seeing the giant wooden man or whatever's happening in this movie they all look practical they feel real and it really helps with the scares. The third piece you need in this movie has is a great director that understands how to scare audiences. It's not about just setting up jump scares and delivering jump scares. It's not just about showing you a creepy ghost. It's about setting a vibe, telling a good story, and under understanding how to use the camera to stretch tension. The scariest parts of horror movies are not the bang. It's not the jump scare. It's not when you're actually seeing something. It's the ability to spread and stretch tension as long as you possibly can. And those long, dreadful moments of tension are what actually scares the audience, and this director knows how to do it. There are some incredibly well put together shots in this film, some great moments of just sound design, and moments that really kind of stretch out and build up to the actual scare. Sometimes don't even have a satisfying bang at the end of them, but they all just work well enough that this movie is scary and it's going to scare a lot of audiences. I also love the story here. I do think it's a little predictable from pretty much the first beats of the film. You kind of understand what's going on and that's probably my only gripe with the film as a whole. The script here and everything that happens in the story is very, very predictable and I think everybody involved, and I think because of that the story could be a little dull at times, but I love the characters here. I love the blind sister. She is just so interesting and engaging when she's on screen. She's weird, but like in a way that still feels trusting. But I just think a lot of the bad guys in this movie are criminally bad. When I say criminally bad, I mean just kind of goofy bad. They're just... 
they're just dicks. And I don't know if they completely complement all the other stuff that's going on in the film when it comes to the supernatural elements and the scares, right? But overall, this is an extremely solid horror movie that I also thought had an extremely smart ending. I loved the ending of this film. I loved the final shot. I thought it was brilliant and it made the whole thing worth the watch. I really loved Oddity. I will give this a 3.5 out of 5 and a strong recommendation to go check this out. I believe it's on demand right now. You can get it on Amazon, on YouTube. Go watch Oddity. Uh, for spooky season. And uh, go watch the Mets tonight, baby. We're taking on Milwaukee game two. We're going to sweep them. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like this video, subscribe for more 10 notifications. I'll see you in the next one.